people of YouTube and welcome back to South Africa. Now, I'd like to start off by thanking everyone who subscribed or generally watched my channel. Uh, I didn't expect uh, so many people would watch, really. I've got almost a month of viewership and, uh, well, that's great, to be honest. I've reached a whole bunch of people all over the world, including some in Ukraine. Yeah, far-reaching. Now, I'd like to start off with this. It's a Raspberry Pi. Ta-da! I know, it's been a bit redone on YouTube, people showing off their Raspberry Pi setup. But I figure I would show this one off uh, because some new people will probably get, be getting into Raspberry Pis because of the new one that's out. It's got four USB ports and they're all properly powered, sort of. So that's a win because this thing has got two USB ports and they're horribly underpowered. So it kind of gets a bit complicated to run things on it, especially all these things. Now, I'd like to start off by showing how I built a power supply for this thing, the South African way. Okay, so first of all, this is a USB hub. It's a piece of crap from China. Yay, round of applause for China. Now, what's wrong with it? Well, apart from being a piece of crap, it was supposed to have electrolytic capacitors. It didn't have any, so I went and stuck two new ones in from an old motherboard. I, don't, I think they're pretty new. The motherboard died of a lightning strike, so yeah, it's all good. Now these are two 6.3 volts, 1,500 microfarad capacitors, so plenty of punch. I soldered one in where the, the, re, the original capacitor was meant to go, and another one in where a DC jack was supposed to go. Then simply drill some holes and uh, you have a pretty cool looking USB hub. Now, there's one other thing I had to do to this so it would work. I cut the positive uh, power lead from the USB plug. I'll explain why in a second. Now, I got this uh, Nokia phone charger. It's 1200 milliamps and it should be adequate, but once you've plugged up three of these and you plug up the last one, bang! It just dies and it goes into a weird reboot loop and then uh, I had the OS corrupt and that was very annoying because the internet's so slow and I wanted to download the latest copy of the OS so I was sad and I had to wait and couldn't enjoy my Raspberry Pi. So, I've got this. Now, it's a Nokia product so it's really good stuff. You could beat zombies over the head all day with it and it still work, just like the good old 3310. Now, this is where the fun bit happens. This is the other end of the cable. Now, you can obviously tell I did a few things to it. Now, the first thing I did was I cut it. Now there's the little micro USB plug. Pretty sure that's the name. And here's a USB jack I got off the same motherboard. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that does in a second. And here's a USB plug I got from another fine piece of Chinese merchandise. That died. Now, Everything's plugged up the way it should be, basically. The polarities and everything are respected for the plug. This plug, which I use to charge up a MP3 player or whatever comes with a USB cable that needs power. It receives no data, so it's all good. And this is the original plug. They're all spliced together. Now, I'm going to show you how it all plugs together into the Raspberry Pi. This goes into the Raspberry Pi's power supply, or power supply side. Okay, the USB hub plugs into the USB plug on the Raspberry Pi to receive signal. The next thing it does is this second powered USB plug, the male one. I know I probably shouldn't have done it, there's a risk I could plug it into this. And uh, well, I'm not too sure what would happen, but I'm not willing to test it. Some people seem to think it would mess stuff up. I just think it probably wouldn't mess stuff up if you accidentally powered the USB, the Raspberry Pi from this side. However, you would lose uh, overcurrent protection and if something were to fail on this cheap piece of rubbish, stuff might burn out and uh, well, you'd be left minus something. So, what this does is it powers the hub through one of the unused USB ports. So now you have, you have quite a bit of added capacitance on the power supply side. This powers all the USB ports at pretty much full power and uh, the capacitors provide voltage stabilization 
and signal, well data rather, can be communicated through the USB cable that does not provide any power to the hub and this does not backwards power basically the Raspberry Pi. So that's how it works and it's actually worked pretty well. So I'm sorry if that was a bit confusing but I'm pretty sure you'll get the point and uh, yep that's that for that video and thank you for watching.